gentlemen, live from the historic Galois Theater in Springfield, Missouri, it's the Mystery Hour! And here's your host, Mystery Jeff Holtz! How you guys doing? Good? So, hey, we have a great show for you guys tonight. We have the music of Angela Edge. Yeah. And we have an interview with Sean Askinosi, a chocolatier. A chocolatier. And we have another great time in Branson. Check it out. Today I'm in Branson taking on Fritz's Adventure, this amazing place where you can be a kid no matter what age you are. It's time for the Laser Maze Challenge. My competitor, first score, Micah. What is he, like nine or something? I can beat him easy. I'm going. Micah's going down. What? What did I do? Oh, I feel like James Bond's out of shape brother. Terry Bond. It's me, Terry Bond. I get the ladies that James Bond forgets to notice. No, oh, no. It's like, imagine if James Bond had to wear lots of sunscreen. Micah, do you know what it's like to wake up in the morning and feel sore for no reason? No? I do. The name is Bond. Terry Bond. <laughs> Who has an inhaler? Yeah. Hey, look, it's my sidekick, Mo. Hey, how's it going? Mo, what's the most harrowing situation you've ever found yourself in? The other day, my dog, I thought a deer was chasing it, and, um, <laughs> and so I screamed for it to be alerted to run, and indeed, we escaped the attack. <laughs> so that was my situation. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> so, to be able to you know? escape an herbivore like that, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do things I've noticed. <laughs> These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here we go. I've noticed that for a piece of paper, a paperclip is like dating, and a staple is like marriage, and a three-hole punch is like a polygamous cult. It's <laughs> a lot. Just took that analogy all the way to polygamy. I've noticed that if you could actually listen to your heart, it would probably tell you to beat it. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel great about that one. I've noticed that recap is short for recapitulate. That means recap is just a recap of itself. <laughs> if your expectation for these is that they're funny, no, they're informative. <laughs> Don't lower your expectation, but change it. <laughs> All right, I've noticed that as a child, I wanted to drive more than anything, but as an adult, I want a robot to do it. <laughs> I've noticed that Paddington is just Pooh Bear with better outwear choices. <laughs> outerwear, outerwear, outerwear. And finally, I've noticed that you can tell the financial stability of the business by the quality of their bathroom toilet paper. <laughs> That's things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. <laughs> Jeff! Right. Jeff! Moving hey, Jeff! On. Jeff, you suck! Yeah! Who Your said that? Your whole show sucks. Over here! Over here, okay. man! What'd you say? Your show sucks. Who? Things, things I've noticed sucked. <laughs> Who are you? Well, we think your show sucks. My name's Brian, and this is... Steve. 
Steve. <laughs> we, we've seen, we think uh, your show is like a big pile of... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a, a minute, hold A steaming pile of yeah. I, I can't tell, do you guys know each other? How long have you known oh, each other? Oh yeah, we've, uh, we go way back. We met a long, long time ago. At that one place called... You know. You know. And then later we went to the... That other place. This is very vague. <laughs> very vague. Where, why do you think you can just heckle me in my show? Oh, well, we're the audience, right? We, we paid to be here. Um, we've seen funnier things at the... Circus. At the circus. <laughs> the elephants running around, and crazy clowns. In fact, Steve was telling me that he wrote a rap song for you, and I'm gonna sing it. Jeff, we think your show sucks. Makes us want to say, what the? Yeah. Yeah! All right. Okay. <laughs> that was weird. All right, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go to commercial now. We'll be right back with... Uh... No! You get away from me! You get away from me! I will get you! Ah! Oh, my God. You have to! Give me the combination to the bomb! Give, give me the combination to the bomb! What? I don't know what you're talking about. What combination? The bomb that Van Luger put in this very theater. Give me the combination now! I, I don't know any combos for any bombs. Maybe we should try the police? Uh, you idiot! I'm an off-duty cop! Why else do you think I've come here? To win the love back from my estranged wife and my eight-year-old child. <laughs> Give me the four-digit code for the bomb. I have no idea what you're talking about. It's too late. Everybody down! So, I get, I think we're okay. <laughs> That's just what Van Luger wants. He's playing us like fiddles. It's just what happened to my partner, who he killed, and I vowed to avenge his death. Give me the codes. All right, well, we could try my ATM pin. Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> All right, what it's, is it? It's uh, 5481. <laughs> That's not it. We're all gonna die! Everybody down! Down! Theater is this? <laughs> this this is the Galois Theater. Oh no. <laughs> that comedy bit brought to you by Bush Ramlow and Shore CPAs. Set design and construction brought to you by Elements Digital Quill Studio and Skinny Theatrical Design and Fabrication. Close captioning for the Mystery Hour provided by Paragon Architecture. Big Whiskey's is the official American restaurant and bar of the Mystery Hour. Guest booking provided by Gig Salad. Oh, oh hello. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Here we are in my humble living room with the beautiful skyline of Springfield. <laughs> hey, we have a great guest coming up. We also have a great guest sponsor. 
History Museum on the Square. They came in and took your stuff. <laughs> I hope they don't watch. <laughs> hey, we have a great guest tonight. He is just a fantastic story of him stopping mid-career and opening a chocolate factory. Please put your hands together for Sean Askinosi from Askinosi Chocolate. Um, okay, so let's just start in the middle <laughs> where everyone starts and they say to you, what were you thinking? That's, you're quoting my wife. <laughs> She's here and pretty much every other person that I knew. Yeah. Well, that's probably the problem that I, I don't know that I was. Right. Thinking, if you had been thinking, you might not do it. If I had been thinking, I've, I've, I've often joked that if the ghost of chocolate future would have woken me up and flown me around, um, I might not have done it. <laughs> but, but I'm glad that I did. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So to the, generally, though, you had a, you're a successful defense attorney, and then you're like, I want to now make chocolate. What brought that about for you? Like, how do you just make that abrupt change? Well, it wasn't abrupt. It was five years of searching. Mm -hmm filled with um, Lexapro and... <laughs> no, it was. And you know, antidepressant? Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, prayer. Yeah. And just, you know, desperately trying to find another passion and inspiration. Yeah. And so you, you start it, and you don't just start it with, like, a... a you you want to keep it, like, craft, as it were, I guess, but, like, it, it wasn't... There are easier ways to do it than how you started doing it. Yes. We... I, I go directly to the farms. I was just in the Philippines. Um, next month, I'm going to the Amazon. It's my 42nd origin trip to meet yeah. with cocoa farmers. And so when I go to Tanzania, it takes 60 hours to get there. So yeah. this is definitely not the easiest way to make chocolate. But I love it. I love the travel. I like meeting with farmers. I, I, I just love those relationships. And, and so you pay them very fairly, I guess, part of it. And we do. We pay them... We, we actually did this audit uh, a few years ago. The Drury University Accounting Department did an audit for us, and we've, we have paid in the last 12 years two farmers 55% more than they would have otherwise received from anybody else. So yeah. that's something we're really proud of. Yeah. Thank you. And you... And I, I think what's interesting as well is you, you, just have, you have a fairly small space, but, like... People have taken notice, like around the country. You guys, I don't know how many stores you're in or how many like publications you've been in, but like you, I feel like you've been on TV a bunch. This isn't your first time. We were talking about that on the way over here. Um, yeah, we've had, especially early on, there was a lot of interest, and so a lot of uh, TV appearances, and we have a lot of really good relationships with food journalists around the country that have mm -hmm. been really kind to us. My daughter, Lauren, is our chief marketing officer and works with me, and she's really developed those relationships. And that has really um, helped us, I think, because when I started, nobody was doing this. There were like three people in the country. All of us were starting at the same time. Bean to bar. Bean to bar chocolate. Yeah. Now, you know, probably there's probably 50 people in here that are doing it. But, um, <laughs> um, it's, it's, the barrier to entry is quite low now. Yeah. But, you know, we're... We do sell to a lot of stores directly with no distributor. We sell online. And we continue to enter food competitions all over the world. And it's really important to me to win these. Yeah. And the reason is not, not because of I'm competing against someone else. It's important to me to win because I want people to buy our chocolate because they like the way it tastes. That's yeah. what I want first and foremost not, oh, this is a, you know, a good story and a cool guy yeah. and I'll buy it and, oh, it tastes like sawdust, you know, because, but I'm going to buy it because they're doing good works. No, that's not the way we want to run the company. Right, and that makes sense because you could kind of rest on those laurels. We could and, uh, you know, and, they're, and they're, that's a perfectly legitimate business philosophy, but for us, we want the quality of the product that we make to be first and foremost always 
just slightly above the works that we're doing yeah. around the world, whether it's Chocolate University or feeding programs or, or any of those things. So when someone says rest on their laurels, what's a laurel? Um, I don't know. What is that? I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't so, know. So, yeah. It's as if I, I was setting I you up for a joke, but I don't know. No, I don't I know. heard it come out of my mouth. Yeah. And, and you're like so much that. more smarter, smarter and more accomplished. I thought you might know. Well, I, I did not go to an Ivy League school. Yeah. Um, I didn't have a million dollars or, or, the, or the grades. Um, yeah, yeah. I did have a 2.1 GPA in my freshman year, which would pretty much preclude me from going to fresh any, my freshman year in college. Your freshman year in college, you had yeah. a 2.1. Yeah. And, and now know, you have a chocolate factory. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Now, uh, you, you brought some. You brought yes. some with you. Yes. And on the packaging you have, are these the farmers? Farmers, yes, those yeah. are the farmers. And we, we highlight the farmers on the package. The string that you see on the top comes from the bag of beans. Uh, the okay. inside wrap is, it looks like cellophane, but it's actually a product called Nature Flex. It's 100% home compostable. And oh, we've really? used that since we started, yeah. 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 OK. And, um, and you have, you've like decided you don't want to, you want to grow, but you don't want to become this huge. No, we love, we're on Commercial Street in Springfield here, and, mm -hmm. and we love that. And uh, I hope we're there forever. And we only have 17 employees full time. And it's really important to us to um, not get bigger, but get better at staying small. Uh, get better at staying small. Yeah. And I, what I think is interesting about you is, um, there's like this depth to what you're doing, which you kind of like highlighted, but like, I like that about you, I guess is what I'm saying. Do you want to share chocolate? Please, yeah. This is our new, uh, well, oh. this is our new um, vegan milk chocolate. It's coconut milk, and we just introduced this yeah. uh, a couple of months ago, and it's, it's a really, um, Let's try I it. think, popular. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, it's like sawdust. Yeah, thank you. Okay, that's good. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's wonderful. Um, but actually, I'm not vegan, but I don't. I don't, um, attack, but <clears throat> I don't eat dairy. Right. And so I was very excited for this because yeah. I will consume this. Yeah, it's it's, really it's very good. I did that as a joke. It's very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. But you didn't mention about the. That we have the samples oh. for. Oh, yeah, we have samples for the whole audience. If you come right. to a live taping, you need a sample. And then Sean Asking Wilson, he has a book too. We'll see you. We'll go come back with Angela Edge. We'll be right back. There's a book too. Travel and accommodations provided by Hotel Vanderbilt. Systematic Savings Bank, the official bank of the mystery hour. This is Kate. Kate thinks she's too sophisticated for Branson. Kate is in a book club. She sometimes smiles at the wit she sees in French films. Kate hasn't audibly laughed for years. She thinks there's no way she could enjoy herself having family fun. Kate is about to change her mind. The Mystery Hour is brought to you in part by Ozarks Technical Community College. You have a dream, we have a plan. Tonight's musical guest brought to you by Bear Village. Okay. Hey! Welcome back, everybody. We have an awesome musical guest you're going to love. Please put your hands together for Angela Edge.